Welcome to this lovely episode where I'm going to show you what it is to change tires on a car. Not just take them off the car, but actually change them on the tire machine. So, let's get to it. So first things first, we deflated the tire. Now we got to use the shovel to break the bead. Make sure it's getting flat. You know, locked in. Get the duck head. Because it looks like a duck head. Quack. Use a little tool. Make sure that this is. This doesn't have a TPMS sensor in it. This is just a rubber valve stem, which is great. 2018. Take one. Do that. Roll it on off. Get the bottom side. Do the same thing. Chuck it at your local tire fire, cut the valve stem out. Arr. So you can just cut that out, toss that in the trash, get a new one, because the rubber will get old. We have our beautiful valve stem puller, which is heavily wrapped in duct tape to make sure it doesn't scratch up a rim. Stick through. Okay, right on. Come on, there we go. Right on, pull through, unscrew. Put the cap back on for a second. New tire. lube up with the lube juice. Patented lube juice. This particular tire doesn't have a inside or an outside, so I just put the DOT numbers out, which if you've never read DOT numbers before, they're on the side of the tire. They are it says DOT and then a bunch of numbers and then the last set of numbers there should be one two three sets of numbers and the last sets of numbers are the week and the year that the tire was manufactured so this one is 30 of 21 so it was built last year in whatever week 30 is out of 52 weeks I don't know what August okay. let's put that on then use the duck head to put it back on. This has got a nice thick sidewall, or big sidewall, so it's not terribly difficult to get on, which is nice. When you get some of the really low profile tires, they get really frustrating to put on. Now let's see if this one will go on any easier than the last one did. Or air up. Short answer is no. Alright, we're gonna have to again.
We just gotta put the core back. Which, this is a valve stem core tool. Schrader valve core tool, in fact, because this is a Schrader valve. What'll happen is when you push on this spring, it lets air flow through these holes down the bottom. So that's how it functions. the appropriate air pressure and you're good. Don't forget your cap. I always do. And that is how you change a tire on a rim, even though it's kind of frustrating sometimes. Uh, usually not terrible. On to balancing. We're going to use something called a lug centric balancer. This hooks onto the wheels. These will turn, as you can see, they'll adjust so they can fit any five lug rim. And so you kind of get them close, make sure it's seated, turn, tighten it down. Now it's there. We're going to set it up on the balancer now. So if you're new, this is the, this is the center cone and we have all this yelling in the background. This has to fit into the center of the rim. That there, that there. Then we tighten it down. I tighten these things back because they always get loose. It's not a feature I like. So now we have it locked in. You can leave this on for plus five for speed. All right, we're already in the main screen there. So we take this and we measure here. We measure as far in as the weights are. Cause it's got sticky weights on the inside. Then we can take this and measure the totality of the room. Seven and a half. Uh, seven and a half. So now we have our rim set up here on the machine. So drop the hood.
I don't know why it doesn't always go the first time, but sometimes it does not. Oh, it's because I still have that selected. All right, then you drop the hood. It'll spin it right around. And one of our first mistakes was we didn't pull off the weights. You can spin it with the weights on it if you haven't taken them off already and see what you get. Sometimes it'll come out to zero. It's pretty rare, but it has happened before. So now we take off the rim or the weights. Now we have a buck and a quarter and 0.75. These are in ounces. I don't whatever you guys want to use for other stuff. So what we'll do from here is get So we got 0.75 and a quarter, so we need the smallest ones, which is quarter ounce weights. So these are five on this side, three on that side. But first, we gotta clean off where they sit. So what you do there is get a little rag, get you some brake cleaner or carb cleaner, put it on there. And then we'll, we already have it set to that spot. So we'll just wipe off the dust to make sure it's good and clean. And then we'll get one, two, three. Break that off. Peel off the tape. For this particular machine, we've got this little weight gauge installer. So it'll put it precisely where it wants it. So we get it to go to zero, push the little got a little button back here that you push to get the weights to go up and then go in there and push on it make sure it's seated but to demonstrate what the machine does is when I pull this thing out it starts telling me when I'm there and so you get it to be as close to zero as you can get it so that's one side all right so what I did is I reset up the machine because it had it as a hammer on weight instead of a stick on weight and uh, took that weight off, so we're a buck fifty. So we can actually use a different type of weight, which is the half ounce weight. So we can just use three of those to get it a little bit better where we want it. So that was my fault. I was dumb. I didn't pay attention to where it put the weight marker, but that's okay. We can fix it. Not a big deal. Yo, when it says okay, that means it's as close as it'll get to zero, zero. Because if you do F3, I mean, that's how much it's precisely off. You could add another tenth of an ounce, in a, or 0.1 ounce and 0.15 ounce, and it'll make it perfectly zero, but we don't even have weights that small. So good, good enough that you won't notice a vibration. So that's how you balance the tire. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of them and get on with the day.